jumbo stuffed quail, jumbo stuffed quail. I saw the sign, but I didn't have time for jumbo stuffed quail. I don't know when I'll get back to whisking. Hello and welcome to Jolie Living. Today we're in the shop and we're going to be making some wall brackets for a shower curtain that was previously a shower curtain that surrounds a claw-footed tub. It uh, currently or previously was suspended from the ceiling by quarter inch rods and it was very, uh, uh, not very rigid. So we're going to make some two brackets to mount it to the side wall and I think I will have one other, uh, a similar bracket that uh, mounts it to the ceiling. We have a sloped ceiling in this small bathroom so there's, it's a very three-dimensional puzzle and I think we'll reduce it to, we'll have four points of contact and only one will be these uh, quarter inch rods suspended from the ceiling. So I think it's going to be a lot better than it was, but it's going to take a little bit of cutting and welding, which are kind of fun to do. And uh, we get to use a plasma torch today. This is a, a plasma torch. This is the, the torch itself. Um, it was kind of donated to the family by a, a friend of the family. Thank you, Ken. And uh, I hope to get a lot of use out of it but you use it to cut uh, uh, your thin or your uh, metal plate. I have a different saw to, to cut tubing and things like that, a metal band saw, but uh, for cutting uh, steel plate, the, the torch does a great job. You can actually cut shapes and you can freehand cut or you can make uh, templates or stencils and follow those. So uh, it's, it just does a quick, cleaner, quicker job than using a torch or things like that. So I'm still kind of learning the cutter and uh, I look forward to using it and wanted to share it with you all. Our cutting tip is a, a quarter of an inch wide. So to the center, which is where the cutting is happening, is one eighth of an inch uh, away from the outside edge. So you can make a straight edge that's just an eighth of an inch away from the line that you want cut uh, to the outside. If it was the inside, you'd be, want to be, you know, if it's an inside cut, you'd want to be an eighth of an inch to the inside. So I've set up a little, uh, just a wood guide here that I can follow. So I just have a piece of wood here. Uh, a very a straight piece of wood that will be my guide to cut this uh, piece of metal off straight. The tip of the cutter can just run along that piece of metal of wood and uh, and like I said it's offset uh, in just at an eighth of an inch so that I can cut exactly where I wanted to cut off. So we'll see that here shortly. I just wanted to uh, let you know what plasma is in this case. It's a, a gas which has been heated to an extremely high temperature and ionized so that it becomes electrically, electrically conductive. And as you can tell, I'm reading this. I wanted to get it right. The plasma arc cutting process uses this plasma to transfer an electrical arc to the workpiece. The metal to be cut or removed is melted away by the heat of the arc and then blown away. There is a little air compressor in there as well that helps with the blowing away process. So that's enough technical. You'll see sparks flying. That's the fun part. Okay, here we go. Take one.
cleanly, nicely. Requires minimal cleanup of that edge. I love it. And that's about, I can maybe cut something a little thicker than this, but with this machine, it's good to up like a, I think 3 sixteenths of an inch. I just wanted you to see, uh, using wood as a template, people probably wonder with all that heat, uh, is, is wood an issue? This is the underneath side. We cut right along here with the uh, tip pointing down. And all there is is this little bit of charring that's not even coming off on my finger. So wood templates are a good way to go with plasma cutting. I'm excited. All right, now we're gonna cut our square tubing off to the right length. Be the main part of our offset from the wall. I made a quick little corner jig so that I can drill my mounting holes in the exact same spot uh, on each plate. Thanks dad for making me think about jigs. Boom, just right there. Rotate, hit the next corner and away we go. Here it is snug up in the corner and uh, just put a little pressure. Before you know it, we have a hole in the exact same spot. That's the other corner. Right. A flap disc on a grinder is a great way to clean up metal edges real quick. So like the, you get a little bit of a rough edge after the, using the plasma cutter. This will take that down in a hurry. So just a quick clean up here. Unclamp, rotate, and get the other side. All right, here's the piece with half of the mill scale removed. That's the mill scale. It's just, you know, uh, coating from the, from the factory, the mill, that protects it and keeps it from rusting. But there's oil and other things, and all that will... Uh, Sometimes it's even difficult to weld through, but uh, for sure for paint to stick. So now that I finally have all the parts prepped, cut, um, all the mill scale cleaned off and holes drilled, we are ready for assembly. We're gonna weld these together and have some nice little, little brackets. Um, we'll weld a nut on the back side of this plate and we will put a screw through through this little bracket and this will hold the, the curtain rod firmly against the wall. So it's the reason for doing all this is to have something kind of firm to uh, support this basically a suspended curtain rod around, around a claw fit tub. All right, and just like with painting and a lot of projects, Tons of effort just goes into the prep. I There was no way I was going to, even on uh, fast speed, make you watch me uh, cleaning off the mill scale out of, off of all these parts. And uh, I wore down the, the 60 grit uh, flapper disc pretty, pretty far in doing that. Okay, before I started, well, I'm about to start officially welding. And before that, I spent some time with a test piece, um, and you can see it out here. Same thickness of the base, same thickness 
of the square tubing trying to get the settings right on the welder so that you don't burn through the thinner material and yet still adhering melting uh, the thicker material so i think i have the settings set uh, pretty good right now and i have this thing i have the square tubing in place held by magnets in uh, uh, two axes and so i'm going to just do a tack weld on corners to hold it in place then we'll fill in all the way around i'll try to do this and stay out of the way And you have to tack all the way around. When welding, when adding heat, things start to, uh, well, first of all, they expand and then they contract uh, back further than where they were before. So things won't lay flat. So I just gotta work my way around this thing, try to hold it all in place. And then I can do all the welds fill in. It's kind of funny that it's uh, a bit of a, an effort to hold things in place and keep them as you intend. So there it is, tack welded into place. And now I can uh, proceed to fill in all the gaps. Even then I'll probably do a half of one side at a time and then move, move over to the opposite side and do about a half there. Just that it gets to be so much heat, you really warp this this bottom plate if you concentrate it too much in one spot. All right, now we'll try to put a small bead in right here. Again, trying to keep more of the heat up on the square tubing. I fill in right there. Not bad. Probably a little more uh, wire or material than necessary, but I can grind that away. All right, I'm just gonna work my way around it. I'll show you the finished product. So here we are on the, the second piece, and I was still tweaking the settings. You may think you're a, 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 a bad welder or something, but uh, it may just be your settings. So I kept tweaking and uh, I got better. I really like this half section right here but what I have a hard time is when you come back I end up getting some overlap which is bulky and thick I'll grind that down and then out at the corner I got bulky again but so if I had if I could just do one long strip it would have been pretty pretty nice and ready to go this side I got kind of two decent ones but a bit of a hole in the middle but something like this is not going to be a problem. This side's actually okay. But I will grind them down, make them look kind of nice so they disappear. Now it's just time to put the caps on. There we are. Ready for paint. Um, I'm going to prime them first. And then, oh, here you go. That will sit on top and the three quarter inch shower rod will be held by that. We got about three coats of paint, black paint. I used a gloss, just a uh, Rust-Oleum spray paint on our standoffs, our connections to the wall. And then on our little copper, um, in pieces that they go right there 
I put some, I think they had a coat of something on them from the store, but I've been adding additional coats of polyurethane just so that hopefully they don't tarnish too much in the, the damp bathroom environment. And over here, this is the shower curtain ring. Basically uh, a rectangle. And, uh, and this, this was already in the house and was suspended by brackets like that, basically just in three spots. Now we're only going to use one of these uh, with the other two being more rigidly mounted to the to the wall. And I also wanted to show you these are the fittings. It is a, a two-piece rod. A two-piece rod um, that was kind of loose. So I'm using some metal tape, kind of the aluminum tape that you can use for duct work, things like that, uh, to add just a little bit of thickness to both of these to um, tighten up the fit and keep it from uh, not being so so wiggly. So that's all I'm doing right now is getting that all all put back together, cleaned up, and uh, get ready for installation tomorrow. Can't wait. Today we are at the house and mounting the the brackets for the curtain rod. Finally, didn't get any action shots. Uh, we're just kind of into it. I have a helper, Bill. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm just gonna zoom in over here so you can see. I mounted a board and the board is mounted to the wall. Two studs, so it's up there really nice. And then I have four screws in each of my uh, brackets into that one by four. So we're ready to, to mount that, but first we have to, here is the clawfoot tub. We have a, shower standoff comes off right there you'll see more in, in, in just in just a few moments but that's where we are so far well this has been quite the project i think we're about ready to wrap it up let me show you the uh the fourth point of contact i made for the shower rod first two were along that wall third one was the hanging right there which was basically all there were three of those holding it up before so as you can imagine it would swing around causing some stress on the uh, the shower riser now everything's held in place here is the fourth which I really couldn't determine how far from the ceiling it was going to be um, until I got it in place. Ended up after the uh, the small hanger I only needed an inch and a quarter block. I ripped it off of that 4x4 four four that I thought I was going to hang from the ceiling and that's all I needed. And I got into some um, uh, some two by fours, some studs behind, really close to the corner behind the plaster. And I putty up the holes, putty up the holes. Well, on the camera, you don't see them. I can see them with my eye, but they're hardly going to be noticed. I'm pleased with how everything's turning out. It's a solid, solid piece. Now I'll just put up the shower curtain and uh, call it good. But I wanted to thank you for watching Jolie Living, joining us for another project. And uh, please hit the subscribe button and the, and the thumbs up. Like it if, if you don't mind and comment. Those are all things that help, help YouTube know uh, we're doing something useful here. I heard from someone that they save their liked videos so that they can go find them. They are special videos. It's kind of where they're saving content for themselves. 
but there is a save button if you prefer. Um, but anyway, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Take care. Jumbo stuffed quail, jumbo stuffed quail. I saw the sign, but I didn't have time for jumbo stuffed quail. I don't know when I'll get back to West Kentucky again. But the next time that I do, I'm going to go in and try them jumbo stuffed quail.